You're watching News 54. The fight against COVID is both a social as well as a health challenge. And as such, we aspire for herd immunity in the health arena. And we seem to have built what psychological experts called herd instinct in the social arena. We seem to have built a national consensus on what we must do to defeat this pandemic, and I believe it is steadily working. Fellow Kenyans, the second path out of the COVID fog for Kenya is an opportunity with a promise. When we reported the first case of COVID-19 more than 15 months ago, the idea of a vaccine was nowhere in our minds. One year later, in March 2021, we were able to roll out a national vaccine deployment plan, and our strategy was to vaccinate 10 million adults by June of this year and approximately 16 million by June of 2023. But inspired by acceleration doctrine, which is about constantly increasing the speed of achieving our goal, we revised our vaccine plan, and instead of vaccinating 10 million adults by June of 2022, we expect that we will vaccinate the entire adult population of Kenya, which is 26 million people, by the end of this year. In fact, by Christmas of this year, we intend to have vaccinated over 10 million adults, according to our experts, and we will have built a capacity to vaccinate 150,000 people every day as of August of 2021. And this accelerated plan will be aided by a few swift, bold actions and programs. For instance, we have already ordered 10 million vaccines from Johnson & Johnson, with the first consignment arriving in Kenya in August of 2021. But in the process of negotiating with this company, we also have managed to get a lower price. For the price of 10 million vaccines, we will be able to have them deliver 13 million doses. And because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is administered using a single shot, the speed of rolling out our vaccination program will therefore be accelerated. Using these vaccines and others in the pipeline, this is how we will vaccinate over 10 million Kenyans by Christmas of 2021 and 26 million Kenyans by the end of 2022. And if a vaccine for underage populations is registered by early next year, we intend to vaccinate an extra 4 million young adults by June of 2022. With a vaccinated population of 30 million people, this will allow us to begin the journey for herd immunity against this pandemic, and this is our intention for the next 12 months. In that regard, and following consultations with the Council of Governors, and also with the advice of the National Emergency Response Committee to COVID-19 and the National Security Council, today again I issue Public Order Number 4 of 2021. And that is number one, that the hours of curfew are maintained at between 7 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the COVID-19 hotspots which comprise the counties of Kisumu, Siaya, Homa Bay, Migori, Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga, Bungoma, Kisi, Nyamira, Kiricho, Bomet, and Transoia up to the 31st of July 2021. That for the rest of the territory of the Republic of Kenya, the nationwide curfew shall continue to be observed from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. for a further containment period of 60 days. That excluding the above mentioned counties, in-person worship and congregational worship shall continue to be conducted in keeping with the one-third capacity rule and in accordance with the guidelines of the Interfaith Council. That the prohibition against uh, public gatherings is extended for a further 60 days. That all persons coming into the country must be in possession of a negative COVID-19 PCR certificate acquired no more than 96 hours prior to arrival into the country, 
with a PCR certificate also having been validated by the trusted travel platform for those traveling by air. That duly classified and licensed hospitality establishments must continue to adhere to the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health. The establishments must also ensure the adoption of and compliance with the tourism safe travels protocols developed by the hospitality sector themselves. In regards to funerals, cremations, and other interment ceremonies, it is directed that these ceremonies shall be conducted strictly within the 96 hours of confirmation of death. That the attendees, officiators, and facilitators of funerals or graveside cremation ceremonies shall be limited to 100 persons in total. That the attendees, officiators, and facilitators of wedding celebrations, of marriage, or traditional union ceremonies, or rites of passage, and all other similar events or ceremonies shall be limited to 100 persons in total. That all hospitals are directed to limit the number of visitors for hospitalized patients to one visitor per patient per day, and that all other rules, guidelines, and protocols not reviewed through this public order shall continue to apply until otherwise notified. Fellow Kenyans, let me conclude with just two thoughts. First, it is now clear that we cannot exclusively depend on foreign partners and their systems to resolve our health crisis. And in that regard, we must substantially prepare ourselves for the next crisis before it knocks on our doors. As a government, we are addressing this matter through a medium term and a long term strategy. In the medium term, we will be building in Kenya a fill and finish plant, the, the plan being to import the COVID 19 va vaccine unpackaged and finalize the logistics of filling and packaging here in Kenya. This will save us on time and will make us a supply hub for the East and Central African region. Our long-term strategy is to set up a human vaccine center. And as to this regard, I have directed a multi-agency team to activate this plan and to focus not only on the COVID-19 vaccine, but on any other human vaccines that are needed in our country and in our region. The national quest to produce human vaccines here in Kenya will elevate our nation as a producer for both human and veterinary vaccines that we currently supply to Eastern Africa all the way to Morocco in North Africa. The second thought is about the uptake of the COVID vaccine. Once we begin the mass rollout in July this year, once we begin the, the mass rollout in July this year, Unfortunately, some Kenyans have formed certain theories about vaccination and its effects. Although vaccination is free of charge and no one will be forced to get it, some education about it is critical. We apologize for that technical hitch, but uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta has outlined uh, the measures that will be in place as far as the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned. He says uh, that, all right, we have him, so let's go back and recap later. Council, working with the private sector partners and other civic associations to take up the vaccine education and, to be, and, and for it to be a central plank of the upcoming vaccination drive. This way, we will build a herd immunity and ensure that the instinct of communities to survive remains high. I thank you for your attention, and let me just continue to urge all Kenyans to do everything they can, not only to keep themselves safe, but also to keep their brothers and sisters, their parents also safe. We can see what is happening across the globe on our own continent we are glad and happy that the measures that we have taken are helped us 
contain this disease as much as possible. But that can only and will only continue to be a successful route if we as Kenyans continue to work and collaborate together and support each other in this endeavor until we have truly defeated this pandemic and ensure that all of us are able to see the end of the rainbow. With those few remarks, I say thank you very much. God bless you all. Asante Nisana. Thank you. Okay. President Uhuru Kenyatta speaking to us from State House Nairobi. A number of East African nations have imposed or reimposed lockdowns. He uh, has reinforced some measures, including the uh, curfew that is in place in Nyanza and Western Kenya on account of the COVID-19 uh, escalation, escalation of infections. And uh, he's also, again... Um, extended the curfew in the rest of the country. He says the uh, same measures that were in place before these uh, curfew measures stay in place in Nyanza and in Western until the 31st of July 2021. Uh, he says uh, those to be buried need to be buried within 96 hours of the confirmation of death. The numbers as to those allowed to attend weddings and funerals remains at 100. As for those who have been taken ill, hospitals have been advised that to allow one visitor per patient per day. Uh, he had some good news, and that is Kenya has purchased 13 million doses of uh, the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine at the cost of 10 million doses. He says that the plan is to vaccinate 10 million Kenyans by December, and the mass rollout will begin in July. The midterm plan he says is for Kenya to import the COVID vaccine unpackaged and package it in the country as well as distribute it to the rest of the continent. Long term, he says the country is looking at establishing a human vaccine center that is to produce vaccines both for animals and for humans. Um, to be produced in the country. Those are just some of the mitigation, COVID-19 mitigation measures that he has outlined. I will uh, recap some of them. That is the curfew in Nyanza and Western Kenya remains in place until the 31st of July 2021. And that follows an escalation of the Delta variant, which is uh, extremely virulent. And uh, he says, as far as deaths are concerned, persons should be buried within 96 hours of the confirmation of death. Uh, worship continues, but he says uh, the capacity is capped at a third of uh, the total capacity. He says uh, one visitor per patient per day for those who are, who are hospitalized, and uh, that's pretty much it. We will be bringing you more details at 7 and at 9 p.m. President Uhuru Kenyatta speaking on the COVID-19 situation in the country.